Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys do not know who I am, my name is Divyanka and I'm a doctor of pharmacy here in the US. Here on this channel, I'm striving to help both you and I live our best and most productive life. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some real pros and cons of entering the field of pharmacy as a career. There's a lot of skepticism out there right now in regards to being a pharmacist and pursuing a career in pharmacy. A lot of those comments are stemming from either job statistics or things like that. And a lot of those opinions are definitely just. Things are changing. We as a race have recently learned so much in regards to tech and that immediately means automation for the pharmacy industry. More automation and more tech inevitably is affecting every single industry out there and it's definitely changing the industry of pharmacy as well but regardless of any situation it doesn't mean that the whole career is bad so I suggest definitely going over pros and cons if you're assessing if entering pharmacy is right for you both from a career standpoint and personal standpoint and go from there so let's just get right into the pros and cons and we're gonna start with the pros the first good thing about a career in pharmacy is that generally it is a well compensated career and therefore I would kind of coin it as a safe career. You know that once you graduate and once you do find a role, whatever that role is, you'll be taken care of in some capacity. In the US, the average pharmacist compensation is 120K. Again, this is an average, but that's a pretty good average for an industry. And of those in the pharmacy career, the lowest 10% still make over $87,000 a year. So again, definitely a safe industry from this compensation perspective. The next great thing about a career in pharmacy is that the gender gap is actually one of the lowest of any industry in the United States. Now that means there's less of a pay gap between females and males within the industry of pharmacy and also that means that there's almost an equal amount of both females and males within the industry of pharmacy. Now the next great thing about pursuing a career in pharmacy is that you have many different options. If you don't want to be a clinical pharmacist, you don't have to be. If you love learning about the medications, are really interested in making a patient's life better, but don't want to be patient facing, you don't have to be. If you like a desk job, you can pursue a career within pharmacy that allows you to have that. If you are someone who likes to be on your feet, you like just going to work, clocking in, doing your work, leaving, and leaving work at work, then retail is something that would be great for you. If you really want to be patient facing and for some reason you really like working with elderly people, then you can work in nursing homes. There's a huge variety of things that you can really pursue within pharmacy and I think a lot of them are overlooked. I've made another video about the different career paths one can pursue with your PharmD and again, I think that's well worth watching because there are so many positions outside of the ones that you normally hear about. You don't have to be behind the counter as a retail pharmacist if you don't want to be. There are nine plus other major categories of job roles. I, for instance, am a regulatory writer. I sit on my computer and I edit many documents that go to different regulatory agencies like the FDA to help move things along, whether it's a clinical trial, an IND application, whatever it is. So again, I'm not patient facing at all and I get to choose that because that's what I wanted. So even though pharmacy is is just one career you have many different options and the best part is you can kind of transition between them of course strategically but that is something that we can do and if I wanted to make that career transition and be a retail pharmacist or a hospital pharmacist I could very well do that in the future the next great thing is that you don't actually have to be certified as a pharmacist by taking the board exam to actually work now the board certification is actually for your pharmacist license and that is for any clinical practicing pharmacist. So if you are a retail pharmacist or a hospital pharmacist, basically anything truly patient facing, you do have to have your license to be able to practice that. But if you're someone who's not really going to go down that sector in terms of your career, you don't technically have to take your license exam. For instance, I graduated last year and have not taken my license exam, but again, I'm completely apt to be working in the role that I am in. Now, I always suggest that if you've already graduated, you should definitely take your NAPLEX, which is the license exam. I do plan on taking mine, and again, that's just so I don't have to take it in the future so that my license is actually active. And if I ever wanted to, again, work as a retail pharmacist or in the clinic, I definitely could because I have my license. Now, if I didn't work towards that, then of course I wouldn't be able to do that. So it is a good thing that you have that option depending on what career path you're going to choose, but it's always a good idea to take that NAPLEX. 
and the closer to when you graduate, the better. The next great thing about a career in pharmacy is that you can basically work anywhere in the world. Depending on what path you go down for your personal career, there are definitely opportunities globally. And that's great because if you want to move, life happens if you get married and you want to move, or if your family is moving somewhere and you want to move with them, you won't necessarily have a hard time finding a pharmacist's job in the next place you are to move to. Especially when it comes to a clinic or retail pharmacy, it's extremely easy to kind of make moves, especially when you're part of a chain pharmacy such as CVS or Walgreens. It's very easy to kind of move within those different stores nationally and globally. So again, just that availability there is definitely a convenience that I don't really see in some other industries. The next great thing about pharmacy as a career is that there are entrepreneurship opportunities if you allow yourself to find them. This is something that's becoming more and more popular, I would say, within pharmacy. But once you have your practicing license, you can start a pharmacy. You can make pharmacy into a non-traditional business of sorts. Again, there's so many different things that you could do within it. You could become a freelance medical writer. You could have a medical writing agency. Again, it's endless. But just the fact that those opportunities exist and you are equipped with your PharmD with a great amount of therapeutic knowledge, and then you can go ahead and utilize that in so many different ways. So again, I think this is such a big opportunity and if you are interested in that at all, definitely look through it. There's a book called Entrepreneurship in Pharmacy that is a great read and gives examples of entrepreneurship within pharmacy. And again, overall, if you are well equipped from a degree and take that and mesh that with an entrepreneur's business mind, you can definitely come up with a variety of great businesses within that realm. The next great thing, especially right now for pharmacists, is that we are gaining more authority in terms of the healthcare sphere every day. Right now, pharmacists are fighting for provider status in different states and certain states have granted that to their pharmacists. And again, it's being recognized as actually being a provider when you're a pharmacist. People are finally realizing how much we actually learn in school and all of that. So if you are a practicing pharmacist in a state that has allowed for that, again, that will definitely directly impact your work. And as an individual pharmacist, that gives you more leeway to actually make a difference in whatever way you want to make that difference. The last great thing is high job stability. Now, although the complaints of many people are that jobs are decreasing, there aren't as many jobs within the realm of pharmacy. Again, it depends where you look. You aren't going to be a pharmacist one day and be laid off the next day very often. There is pretty good job stability within the realm of pharmacy. Again, really depends on where you're working and what you're doing. But for the most part, if you establish your value along with the value that you come with, with having a PharmD in your role and make yourself indispensable, then you will have good job stability for life. And that goes for any industry, but specifically pharmacy. So definitely, of course, work hard, make a difference where you're working, provide your value in a way where the company really needs you in your role doing what you do best. Now let's talk about the cons. The first sort of negative point about being a pharmacist is that of course it takes a lot of schooling. I did a six year ex accelerated PharmD program and usually that does take four years for undergraduate and four years for graduate so a total of eight years and then if you are to do a residency or fellowship that can take one to two years so like medical school or any graduate school there is a time component involved it's just how it is you need that schooling to have that background to be able to work as a pharmacist so if you are looking for something a little speedy you might see this as a con or a negative point the second negative point might be tuition costs and or student debt. Of course, six to eight years of school is not going to be cheap. So you are going to be coming out of school with a good amount of debt. Now, generally, of course, debt isn't good, but if it's the only way to go to school and to pursue what you want to pursue, of course, it's worth it. Whether that's for pharmacy school, medical school, any other graduate school, that's a factor that's kind of always going to be involved. So it's not much different. The only alternative would be to get a four year degree and then work in the respective industry but again especially when you get in the six-year program it is worth it to have that accelerated time do your pharmacy schooling do the extra two years pay your tuition and have that degree the next negative point can be seen in a positive light but I would say that generally if you are a practicing clinical pharmacist you do have a lot of upfront responsibility in your role your license is on the line every time you're either providing a medication 
providing recommendations, if you have technicians working under you, if anything happens, your license is what's questioned. So again, that is a lot of responsibility, especially when it comes to working in a retail store or at a hospital. This is kind of your role as a pharmacist, so most people should be okay with this and we're prepped by our training through our internship to be okay with this, but I think that this can be seen as a negative point for some. That's a lot of responsibility and sometimes unfortunate events do happen where if a big mistake happens under your watch, if a technician makes a big mistake, again, under your overall watch, your license can be questioned and many pharmacists, I would say rather unfairly, have gotten fired. I've heard many stories. So again, this can be seen as a negative point, but you are are well equipped in terms of schooling, what you learn for these roles. So also keep that in mind. Always make sure to double check your work, get a second pair of eyes on it, especially again when it comes to prescriptions for patients. But that is a responsibility that comes with the role. The next con is that pharmacy is generally highly competitive. Most industries are, but pharmacy specifically, it is kind of always competitive. It's competitive to get into school, it's competitive for internships, it's competitive for rotations, and then it's of course competitive for the job market. So overall what that means is you're gonna have to put a little more work in to stand out in this competitive market in every realm, and so you have to put in that effort, be willing to put in that work to get to that point. Again, not really a negative point in a holistic sense, but if you aren't one to always go above and beyond, really try to stand out, you might not be setting yourself up for your career in the way that you should. The next possible con is that there is a component of customer service involved, again, especially if you're working as a retail or hospital pharmacist. Now, for me, I really like just diving into the science and working with the science itself and not having to deal with other factors. And in my role right now, I do have to deal with other factors like project management and communication, but customer service isn't necessarily one of them and I'm okay with that. But if you're a retail pharmacist, again, that's a component of your role and your job and you can't kind of avoid that. So if customer service isn't something you're trying to engage in and have be part of your role, then definitely think about that when you're looking at what to pursue in terms of your pharmacy career. The next con is again, dependent on what you do in your pharmacy career. But many times, many pharmacists, especially in retail, in hospital, in clinics, are standing for most of the day. Again, that's something that some might like. If you're an active person and don't mind being on your feet all day, that's completely okay. But I know for me, even though I'm an active person, that's not something I was really looking forward to if I were to pursue a career in retail, let's say. The next con, again, dependent on what type of pharmacist you are, but most of the time, you kind of have to always be at your best, especially if you're in a patient-facing or customer-facing role. You are there as a pharmacist, you are doing your role, and there isn't space for you to do anything else or take a second to yourself. And so you really have to be at your best all the time. Again, this does not have to be a negative point at all. It's generally normal to kind of be on for the day. So for your eight, nine hour shift, if you're at a retail pharmacy, that should be totally fine. But again, if you are looking for a more flexible role, then this is something that you should look into. The next con are employee benefits. Now this is highly dependent on where you work, but generally for pharmacists, I have noticed that employee benefits are not so great. So again, this is very job specific. So if you have this in mind, definitely go into jobs knowing that and ask for what you're worth. If you're not getting benefits within this role, then either look for a different job or ask for those benefits that you would like. Again, it's pretty normal to have these benefits and ask for these benefits so it shouldn't be seen as something out of the ordinary but again knowing that that kind of can be the case is very important overall those are my pros and cons for entering the career of pharmacy I think that a lot of them are extremely either specific or generic, and it really depends on what you are doing with your career in pharmacy. I would love to answer some specific questions if you guys have any, so let me know in the comments below, or of course, email me as always. A quick last note here, if you guys like the hoodie that I'm wearing, I of course have this and other designs in multiple different colors on my store. So if you'd like to grab one for yourself or for your other favorite pharmacist, be sure to check out my link in the description bar below. That is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I hope you guys have a great day and you guys will see me in the next video. Mm -hmm.